Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, January 24th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I post a quick update today with uh, some of the exploit activity we are seeing against Atlassian. And well, the quick summary is we are sort of seeing the usual suspects there is sort of your Mirai style attacks. Uh, there are a couple of sort of crypto coin miner likely uh, attacks in there. Haven't analyzed all of uh, the binaries being sent here. Also a lot of scans that pretty much just try to figure out if a particular system is vulnerable. I noted a couple of uh, in the case of compromise kind of that we are seeing. Now, uh, one tool that is used uh, quite frequently here is OAST. Uh, that's short for out of band application security testing. And there are a couple of domains that are being used here, ost.life.fun, Dot site typically to retrieve specific URLs in order to identify vulnerable hosts, but also uh, to identify them via DNS lookups and such. So if you are seeing these particular domain names uh, in your environment, the double check could be part of a authorized penetration test, uh, but definitely something that you probably should alert on. And well, we keep getting interesting new vulnerabilities. Uh, Horizon 3 AI published a blog post with details regarding a vulnerability that was recently patched in Forda's Go Anywhere MFT, MFT standing for their file upload tool. This application has been vulnerable in the past. Now this recently patched vulnerability allows an attacker to add arbitrary admin users to the system. The patch fixes the vulnerability. Like I said, the patch was actually released back in December, but we do have a proof of concept exploits available now with the post from Horizon 3. So I hope you patched. Just before recording, I checked our logs. We are not seeing anything that looks like an exploit attempt yet for it. This was also yet another directory traversal vulnerability. And we got an update from Barracuda for its web application a firewall. Not really that super exciting as far as uh, these uh, security device vulnerabilities go. But uh, then again, I guess uh, maybe I got a little bit too used to them. The first vulnerability here does essentially allow an attacker to upload arbitrary files using the put method. So this would affect any web applications being protected by Barracuda, not Barracuda itself. The second issue here allows bypassing some protections for JSON files. So an attacker could potentially connect to an API, for example, and then due to insufficient protection provided by the web application exploit API endpoints. Overall, like I said, I'm not terribly excited about web application firewall bypasses. It should be assumed when you're designing your web applications that web application firewalls can be bypassed. Of course, still something that you need to address and patch. And Lucia Valentich with Reversing Labs has an interesting blog post with details regarding malware that is being installed by malicious NPM packages. One of the interesting features here is that this malware not only steals secret SSH keys, it does so via GitHub. This is of course in particular difficult to detect in an environment where you do have developers that are using GitHub uh, to manage their code. So they will uh, totally normally uh, upload and download files from GitHub. The keys are apparently SSH encoded. Now it says encrypted in the blog post. Not sure if there's also some encryption involved or if this is just plain Base64 encoding. One thing I'm interested in is uh, what sort of additional measures people are using to protect their secret SSH keys. Of course, you can limit uh, what systems you can connect from using a particular SSH key. Permissions really wouldn't really help too much here because the code runs as the developer who likely will legitimately need to use those SSH keys. 
maybe installing these keys on some kind of YubiKey device. I've done that some in the past that could potentially protect the keys, at least against this specific attack. But once an SH agent also has access to, I'm not sure how much that'll really help in the end. So would be interesting to hear uh, what people are doing in order uh, to protect these secret SH keys because I keep uh, seeing them being exfiltrated by malware in particular as the malware is targeting developers. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.